Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my art channel and who's ready for another acrylic pouring video? So I'm doing a transfer swipe today. I've got black as my base. Um, so I've got this 12 by 12 inch canvas here and I've got it on my spinner. Um, transfer swipe, it sort of combines a bloom or a bloom swipe with negative space where you're picking it up from one surface and putting it out on your canvas. So it's a, it can make some really beautiful effects. So that's what I'm doing today. So my, um, my base is this black house paint, semi-gloss house paint, and I've added some Floetrol to it just to make it a little bit thinner and match the consistencies of my other paints. Then I have white, metallic copper, metallic rose gold, metallic pure gold, metallic magenta, metallic antique gold, and then some Amsterdam white paint mixed with water as my cell activator. So clearly lots and lots of metallics of all different shades. Those are going to be my design, which is going to be on top of the black base. So my paints are all mixed quite thick. This isn't a standard bloom recipe. Um, I find that you can do a transfer swipe just fine with regular Floetrol mixed paints. You just have to mix them thick because bloom pours are typically quite a thick mixture. So you can click on this little link that's popping up about um, how I mix my paints with Floetrol and just make sure that you have a, a higher percentage of paint than Floetrol. Like for a couple of them, my, the paint itself was thinner. And so I used about two parts paint to one part Floetrol. And then for the thicker paints, I used more like one part paint to one part Floetrol. All right, so then I've got this, which is just a piece of cardboard that I've covered in freezer paper. Whoops, almost knocked over my paint there. So this is what I'm going to make my design on, and then I'm gonna scoop up from it to put on the canvas. So for this design, I'm gonna start with white as the base. Okay, now I'm just going to take all of these other colors, except the black, and I'm going to put them out across this white surface. So I'll start with some of this antique gold. We're just aiming to make a pretty pattern. Um, now the copper. Now, rose gold. It's going to be very interesting to see how all of these different metallics, especially all in the gold and pink families, whether they all blend together or whether the different colors kind of remain themselves. I'm sure there will be some of both. All right, now I'll do the metallic magenta. This is my kind of pop of fun color. Not that the other golds are not fun, but this is my true color color. And finally, the pure gold on the top. So this looks like a mess right now, which might, <laughs> might appeal to your artistic aesthetic. Um, but this, now I'm going to take my cell activator, which is um, Amsterdam standard paint, titanium white. What I'm gonna do is put some of it onto um, my palette knife here. And then I'm gonna use that to swipe across this. Um, the first time I did this, it was a total experiment because I did not think that the cell activator would work on Floetrol mixed paint, but it did. So I'm going to do that again. I'm just going to swipe. Beautiful. And the cool thing about um, making something like this on the freezer paper 
is that once you've used up what you need for the transfer swipe, then you can let the rest dry and use it as paint skins for jewelry. If you want to know how to make jewelry out of your leftover paint, click on this link that is popping up. All right, I'm going to do one more swipe. These colors are looking absolutely amazing here. Whoops. Okay. So I did drip some of this paint onto my canvas here. So I'll just wipe that up. All right, I'm gonna torch a little bit, pop some air bubbles, get up as many of those cells as I can here. All right, let me just show this to you because it is super, super beautiful. I wish I could tilt it more so you could see the shine, but it's amazing. All right, so I'm gonna take this. I actually have a couple areas that didn't get lacing on them, so let me just swipe over those just a little. Blowing on the white with a straw can help open up some new cells and new pockets. So if you've got a lot of the cell activator on the top, that's a good way of breaking it up and making some cells appear. Okay, I'm gonna move my board over here out of the way because it's time to put down the base coat here. So this is still quite thick. It's almost the consistency of straight house paint. Just thinned a little bit with Floetrol. So I'm gonna spread it all the way over the surface before I add the transfer swipe. Now I'll give it a good torching because I can see a lot of air bubbles in it. All right, I am gonna let this sit for just a minute more to let any air bubbles that are sort of deep in the paint, let them rise to the surface so that I can pop them with the torch. Because if you've got leftover, or if you have air bubbles remaining in a thick layer of paint and then it dries, it will leave little pinholes in your design, which is not very nice. So for the transfer swipe, I just have this bit of cardboard from another canvas that I used. Um, so I'm gonna be scooping it up on that. So it is flexible, but it's fairly stiff. This is about three inches wide because I've got a biggish canvas. Um, I've done one on a smaller canvas where I used a playing card as the little scooper. So I wanted something that was a little bit bigger. And then I have a couple of tools for modification if I feel like doing some modifying on it afterwards. Okay, I believe I have enough of the air bubbles out that I can start with the transfer swiping. And whenever you make a, uh, you know, a design over here like this that's so pretty, it is hard, hard to make yourself mess it up by scooping it up and putting it out somewhere else. But that is what this whole painting is for. I can make another one of those if I need to. Let's see, how do I want to do it? I think I'd like to have just two bands, one coming this way and one flowing that way. So I'll start with this one. 
Okay, so I'm just going to take this board and scoop the paint up on it. Okay, so that's looking a little ragged, but the worst area right here is where I was going to be crossing the second one over anyway, so that should get covered up no problem. Um, a lot of the other ragged edges, those can be touched up later with a brush. And I did drip a bit here on the edge, but again, I can clean that up. So the next one is going to go this way. So let's do it. Once again, scoop, scoop up that design. Okay, so I got patchy again. Hmm. This part's beautiful. Let me see if I can start this swipe again. That may be a disaster starting in the middle, but I will not know until I try. Hey, that actually turned out not too bad. I may have to do a bit of brushwork here to try to blend the two areas and make it look like one continuous ribbon, but it looks much better than it did, so that's good. Okay, I'm gonna move this board out of the way because I wanna keep what I have left, all that beautiful design that I have. All right, this is going to be interesting to see how it spins because the design always changes somewhat as you spin it. So I've got my area clear. Let's give it a spin. Oh, wow. Okay, so the, the design has shifted. I wonder if that's because the paints that are on top are thinner than the paint that's underneath. Could be. It's still looking very cool. Let me give it one more spin, and then I'll see if I want to do any modification. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so I've lost, you know, some of the negative space as this design has stretched out. Man, the, the shimmery metallics are just insane here. So that's amazing. A lot of these little rough edges that are wigglier than I would like, I can clean those up with a brush. That will not be a problem once it is dry. Yeah, I'm liking this a lot. I don't know that I want to spin it anymore because I don't really want to stretch out and lose any more of what I have. So now what I need to do is just make sure that my edges are covered and do a couple of little tweaks.
All right, so I've been going back and forth whether I should modify or not, and my kids are sitting here. They're saying, you have to add some swirls. So I'm going to add some swirls. So I've just got a toothpick. And I'm just gonna add some little curly cues in there. I think I like the swirls better than the shark teeth, though the shark teeth are cool. So now that I've started decorating the edges, I kind of can't stop. Um, let me try... <laughs> I think I like these ones. That's my favorite design so far. All right, that's a lot of modifications. I don't usually put that many modifications into my paintings, but boy, it made my kids happy, and I think it really did dress up those edges. So I'm very happy with this. Let me give you a close-up. All right, close-up. I think this is the orientation that I like best. So let's go in and see. Look at all the shimmer there. And all those colors, they did definitely blend. But you can also see the copper and the pink and the warm gold and the rose gold. And all of that, as well as the cool lacing that we got from that cell activator. So, here are the modifications. We call these ones fish, because it kind of looks like fish swimming in a line. And then we have some single swirls and some sort of figure eight swirls. And some more fish. And then my son called these ones shark teeth. So between the shark teeth and the swirls and the figure eight and the fish, we have uh, four different types of little edge swirl modifications. So it's looking very fancy and my kids are crazy about it. I hope you enjoyed watching it and let me know down in the comments if you end up trying a transfer swipe or modifications like that. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you'll come back to my channel and watch some more videos. And I will see you for the next one. Bye.